Hello and welcome to A Baker's Passion. I'm Ray Madursky and in this video I'm going to demonstrate one of the great meringue desserts that the French do. We're going to make the succès meringue. Now in um, France and in Switzerland all of the European countries name these a little bit differently so I'm going to try to give you a really clear uh, nomenclature for all the different desserts. There's the progrès, which is made with hazelnuts. There's the succès, the japonais. The French will call it a russe, but everybody else, especially the English-speaking world, they call it a pavlova. So we're going to go through all these different kind of fun things. And the first thing I'm going to demonstrate, most importantly, is how do you get the meringue prepared properly. How do we fold everything into it? Because these meringues have ground nuts in them and cake flour. In America, whenever we do dequoise or these meringues, we tend to use cornstarch. The Europeans actually use cake flour. So that's what I've been doing is I've worked these recipes, these formulas out. Uh, I, I've stuck with the French tradition of using cake flour. Um, so I think these are going to be a lot of fun. The first one I'm going to do is the succès. And we're not going to do the traditional succès would be the almond meringue with a praline buttercream decorated any one of hundreds of ways. There's no real set traditional way to decorate it. But what I'm going to do though, I love it with chocolate. I used to put this on the uh, dessert menu at my restaurant, a ganache succès. So that's what I'll be demonstrating in this video today. So let's get going. So into one bowl I'm weighing my nuts which are at the bottom, my powdered sugar, and now I'm going to add my cake flour. Okay, now everything has to get ground in the food machine. I'm grinding the last of my nuts. With the flour. And there we go. It should be a beautiful, fine consistency. Okay, so my pan, I'm going to use a regular 9-inch cake pan to bake the meringue in. And what I've done is I've cut two strips to help me get the meringue out when it's baked. And you just place them in there. Then you cut a round of parchment paper to go in the bottom. Now I do use the baking spray and I've sprayed the uh, pan, I've laid this on, now I'm going to cut the disc, the round of parchment and we'll put that in the pan. Okay, so I take a piece of paper, fold it in half, once in half, second time. Now we're going to bring one edge over and one edge over a last time. So it comes into this pointed thing. I'm going to cut it right about there. And then this opens up into a nice round that we could use in the bottom of our cake pan. And I've got my cream of tartar. So I'm going to turn the mixer on low and gradually increase the speed. Okay, now the eggs are foamy, 
So I'm going to add the cream of tartar. I'm going to slowly add the sugar over about a one minute period. Okay, the last of the sugar has been added. Let the egg whites beat for one additional minute, then we'll begin folding everything in. You can see it's a beautiful, stiff, but holds its shape beautifully, the meringue. So we're in good shape. All right, now I'm going to begin folding half of the nut mixture into the meringue. You will go into the bowl, cut down into the center, come up the sides, and turn the bowl as you're doing this. Now I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to take the egg yolk and milk mixture I used half and half, add it to the remaining nuts. <coughs> Just stir it together, then just pour it in. That's just just perfect. Now complete your folding. And this looks like it's just about ready to be divided between my pans. Okay, so I have my two prepared pans. Now just smooth with either the back of the spoon or a little offset spatula. Smooth the meringue into the bottom of the pan and then get it right into the oven. It's going to bake at 225 until it's crisp. It will depend, it really varies every time I make them, the time might be a little bit different. It's dependent on the humidity the volume that you've gotten into the egg foam so just want it to be nice and crisp and will brown slightly too we're not trying to keep these meringues white I usually wind up getting a little color on these particular meringues when I make them
go. So I'm going to get these into the oven. I'm now putting together the chocolate buttercream for inside the ganache succès. I have chocolate chips in the bottom of the bowl, the mixer bowl. I have my egg yolks with the powdered sugar blended. Now I'm heating the milk. I'll pour the hot milk on top of the egg mixture, then bring it back to the stove and actually boil it. Once it boils, I will place it over the chocolate and let it sit for about five minutes and then I'll whisk it on medium speed until it's room temperature and then I'll add the butter. I'm making a three quarter pound batch of the buttercream. Now I just left hot custard sitting on the chocolate and I'm stirring it now so that it distributes and melts and now I'll put the whisk attachment onto the mixer and I'll beat the chocolate custard until it comes to room temperature and then I'll add the butter. So it's very thick, very rich and it makes great buttercream. I'm ready to add the butter to the buttercream. It's just warm to the touch. It's just a little bit warmer than room temperature. So I'm adding the butter in chunks, probably two tablespoons at a time. Okay, the buttercream is ready, so now I'm going to put it into the container and let it sit till I need it. Now I'm going to assemble the ganache succès. I have a cake cardboard, covered it with a little bit of foil, a little bit smaller than my layer. This is the first layer, smooth side down onto the base. And we're going to fill it with some of this marvelous chocolate buttercream. Now the second layer is going to go with the smooth side facing up. So you can see that the finished cake is really going to be a thin, lovely, delicate little cake. Okay, I'm going to finish covering this with the chocolate buttercream and I'm going to put it in the fridge to let it firm up. While that's firming up I will make the ganache and we'll just glaze the whole top in ganache. And I like to put sliced toasted almonds around the side. It just gives it a nice effect. Okay, so the succès, the ganache succès, it's just lightly frosted with the uh, chocolate buttercream. Now it'll go in the fridge for about an hour. And after about an hour, I'll glaze it with the ganache. Okay, it's been five minutes. So, and I don't time it, I just do a few other things, but you want to give that chocolate time to really get the effect of the heat. And you see I'm not whisking, I'm really just stirring the cream into the melted chocolate. Now we have a beautifully textured, 
smooth, perfectly smooth. Smooth, excuse me, cream. <clears throat> Here you see, I have the cake, our succès, and it's been covered in chocolate. It's just the two beautiful thin layers, so it's a very thin, very elegant cake. And I've got a spatula. What I'll do is pour, and then we'll just level it off, try to make sure we have it all around the sides of the cake, and we'll be enrobed in our ganache. I like to pour. We're going to be able to collect the ganache, but I like to pour it, encouraging it to the sides of the cake, etc. Then just take your large spatula, go in one direction, then the other, and then come again. And then one final quick brush. Now I, I do like to go around and just make the sides nice and smooth. Then the last thing that I would encourage you to do is to get under the cake and it's on a cardboard so and just let it drop a little bit and that'll encourage any loose extra pieces or extra globs of the ganache to come off. So there we go. Now we'll chill it again and then we'll finish the decorating. <laughs> I like to get sliced toasted almonds and put them on the side and the easiest way to do that is to just have them on a sheet pan hold the cake over the pan and it's been in the fridge about two minutes so it's just barely beginning to set and it really acts as a great glue to hold the almonds onto the cake so there we go we're getting slowly but surely the luck that I love for this cake <clears throat> now what I like to do I sometimes use a uh, turntable but I'm just going going to use something that has a lid and let this sit there. And I'm going to pipe a couple rosettes. So what I try to do is pipe them hopefully at right angles to each other. And this is the buttercream now. And then we can pipe, whoops, it's not a problem, although I'm sure everyone is cringing. Not as much as me though. We'll just pipe this one again. So I'm going to get this right back into the fridge. so it does completely set up. And it's just some kind of a little border to contrast with the beautiful, luxurious color of the uh, ganache. And there we go. So I am going to get it right back in the fridge now so we get this to set up. So this is our ganache succès. Well, I hope this instructional video has been helpful in showing you how to work 
with basic meringue and create a repertoire of amazing desserts. Today I've actually demonstrated the succès, which is meringue with ground almonds. Again, we have the progre, which tends to have more hazelnuts, a little bit of almond in there. And then there's the japonais, the uh, Swiss tend to do one with just pistachio called the Silvana. So there are many, many wonderful desserts. And I hope you'll just try one and see what you think. As I said at the beginning, the succès normally has a praline buttercream, but I just, I'm such a chocolate-holic, I can't help myself. And I just, when I had my restaurant, decided to try putting, you know, some chocolate buttercream in it. And it's absolutely amazing because chocolate and almonds really are complementary. And then the ganache robe is just amazing. So now for the best part of any baking day, it's the tasting time. So I'm going to go and I'm going to cut a piece of the cake and then we're going to taste it. We'll see how it is. So as promised, look how beautiful that is. I am going to get to taste this gem of a pastry. And it really is, of all the meringues, the uh, succès and the Silvana are my favorite. Simply Silvana because of my passion for uh, pistachio nuts and this one because of the chocolate. So here goes. The textures, I think, are what make these desserts so wonderful. Totally different than a cake but just melt in your mouth and the right balance of sugar and absolutely incredible. So for a baker's passion, I'm again Ray Madursky and I say thank you. For this recipe, please go to my blog site, which is www.abakerspassion.com. Have a great day.